Excelsis Deo.
Dominus Vobiscum. Et Oremus. Omnipotens and Peterne Deus, qui unigenitum filium et tuum mundi redemptorem constituisti, ac eius sanguine placari voluisti. Concede quesumus, salutis nostre pretium solemni cultu ita venerari, atque apresentis vitae malis eius virtute defendi in teris, ut fructu perpetua letae morentelis. Periundem Dominum nostrum, Jesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia saecula saecularum.
Please be seated. I'm truly honored by your presence tonight, but primarily, of course, our presence here this evening is to honor the most precious blood of our Lord. A very special thank you to all those who, by their donations and their efforts, have made tonight's celebration possible. I hope you're able to join us in the rectory after Mass for our reception. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hearing the words of the gospel for this great feast day, we cannot help but be moved by the shock with which St. John attests to the events of Christ's death. After recounting the events of our salvation, St. John pauses to reaffirm that what he just related was seen by his own eyes, and his facts are true. St. John interjects, and he that saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. This line from St. John is kind of a punctuation mark that concludes the events of Christ's passion. Notice that St. John placed these words after the side of Christ was opened for us. And so when Christ bowed his head and died, this was not the end of his passion. In, instead, even in death, our Savior found yet another way to show the abundance of his love by the flowing forth of his blood. 
One final act of cruelty from the soldier's lance was met by one final display of generosity by our God. More than a punctuation mark, St. John wants his words of testimony to be a flashing arrow to draw the attention of his fellow Jews to this all-significant moment. A flow of blood and water from the side of Christ would certainly stir up images within the mind of a first century Jew. Each year at Passover, the sacrifices in the temple were so numerous that a literal river of blood would flow from the side of the ancient temple. It would then join the water of the Kidron. This yearly river of blood commemorated a supremely sacred event in Jewish history when the doorposts of the chosen people were marked with the blood of the Lamb. This blood obtained protection from the destroying angel. Indeed, in several ways, the Jewish faith revered the sacredness of blood. The book of Leviticus summarizes God's teaching regarding blood. In Leviticus, God says, The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement on the altar for yourselves, because it is the blood as life that makes atonement. Life is in the blood. And for that reason, God's people were forbidden to consume blood. But they were commanded to use blood in the cleansing rituals of the temple. These would reunite someone to the community. They were also to spread the blood upon the altar for the expiation of sins. They were to sprinkle the blood in the sanctuary upon and, and upon the newly consecrated Jewish priests. Clearly, God's law given to the Jews has great significance for blood. So the shedding of the blood of Christ brings all of those laws and rituals to their perfect fulfillment. But even before the Jewish law, the shedding of blood was no mere accidental part of human history. Indeed, even while still in the Garden of Eden, before expelling Adam and Eve, God shed the blood of animals so as to provide skins as clothing for the protection of our, of our first parents. Thus, leaving the earthly paradise of Eden, there was a shedding of blood. Now, in the coming of Christ, our entrance into the undeserved paradise of heaven is made possible by the self-sacrifice of human blood, that of our Savior. Without a doubt, it was to honor that sacred blood and to spread that salvation that this very church of St. Patrick was constructed. The cornerstone of this church was laid on July 1st, 1838. To spread the devotion of the most precious blood, in 1849, Pope Pius IX obliged the Church Universal to celebrate the feast day of the most precious blood. Truly, we are here tonight not merely to celebrate a feast, not even just to commemorate the shedding of blood long ago by the mere recounting of a story. Why we are here tonight is well summarized by the words of Father Frederick Faber in his book entitled The Precious Blood. His moving reflections open the eyes of the reader to the significance of the blood of Christ and the salvation it won for us. Father Faber asks, what strikes us at the first thought of the precious blood? It is that we have to worship it with the highest worship. You see, more than celebrate the precious blood, more than commemorate its shedding, we can and must worship this precious blood because it is the gift from our divine Savior to each of us. He made his blood our gift by his loving act on the cross 2,000 years ago. He also made his blood our gift for today, for seven o'clock on July 1st, 2019, when he said at the Last Supper, Take this, all of you, and drink. This is my blood. The gift of the blood of Christ is not a one-time gift, although it could have been. Christ our Savior could have shed but one drop of his precious blood, and that would have sufficed for the salvation of all mankind. Or even, in the words of Father Faber, our dearest Lord need not have to shed his blood. One tear of his one momentary sigh, one uplift, uplifted look to his Father's throne would have been sufficient if the three divine persons had so pleased. 
Father Faber continues, the shedding of his blood was part of the freedom of his love. It was, in some mysterious reality, the way most likely to provoke the love of man. Why did Christ shed his blood to the point of death when just one drop would do? Why did he pour it out all the more when, after dying, he was pierced? Why did he give us his blood as our supernatural sustenance at the Last Supper? It was so that, in saving us, we could glimpse the unfathomable depth of his love for us. So that, in seeing the love of God, our love for God would be stirred up to flame. The shedding of his blood can create such a force of love within our hearts that each and every one of our actions would redound to the glory of God and bestir endless works of charity toward others. In our homes, among our friends and colleagues, even toward complete strangers. In my seven years of priesthood, I have, I have seen no other mission statement or pastoral plan more perfect than this one. First, to worship the blood of Christ with every effort that we are able to muster. In doing so, we see the love of God present before our eyes and within our souls. And thus, in so doing, we are transformed into men and women of divine charity by such a sacred encounter. In the blood of Christ, which you truly receive each Mass by consuming the sacred host, his blood pours upon you as a blessing beyond measure, a prolific wellspring granting you divine power to move toward holiness and advance the salvation of Christ in this world. I am truly honored beyond words to follow in the footsteps of Father Clores and Father Bozant and to take up this charge of salvation and sanctification with you in this historic and sacred place. The challenges will be many, but so will be the joys. In each one of them, may our minds reflect again and again on the overwhelming abundance of the sacred flow of the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Credo in unum Deum.
Dominus Fabiscum. Oremus.
Orate fratres. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Omnius vobiscu. Et cum spiritu tuo. Sur sum corda. Amen. Gratias agamus domino Deo nostro. Dignum et justum est, ecum et saludare, nos tibi semper et ubique gratia sagere, Domine Sancte Pater Omnipotens Eterne Deus, qui salutum humani generis in lineo crucis constituisti, ut unde mors orie batur, in de vita resurgeret, et qui in lineo vincebat, in lineo quoque vinceretur, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Per quem maestatem tuam laudant angeli, adorant dominationes, tremun potestates, celli celorum que virtutes, ac beata serafim, socia exultatione concelebrant. Cum quibus et nostras voces, ut admiti iubias de precamor, suplici confessione dicentes.
per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Oremus, preceptis salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Amen. Per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Ecum spiritus vos. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tulit peccata mundi. Domine, non sum dignus, et in tres tectum meum, setantum dic verbo et sanabitur anima mea, 
Domine non sum Deus, ut in dres subtectum me, sit tantum dic verbo, sen avitur animam. Domine non sum Deus, ut in dres subtectum me, sit tantum dic verbo, sen avitur animam. Christus semel laudus est, et in motorum examinum navigam, secundo significato ad arrevit, ad arrevit, expectantibus se insulat.
Dominus vobiscum. Oremus. Ad sacram domine mensam admisi, ausimus aquas in gaudio de fontibus salvatoris, sanguis eius fiat nobis quesumus, fons aquae in vitam eternam salientis, quitecum vivida treniat cum Deo Patre in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Dominus Fobiscum, Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen.